Welcoming you to another broadcast. At this hour, we have our bilingual um, broadcast, our teaching in English and Spanish. So we ask that you be patient as we translate live on the fly uh, between languages. Esta es la hora que damos la enseñanza en inglés y español. Y pedimos que tengas eh, pues paciencia mientras que traduzcamos eh, de un idioma al otro. Aproveche y aprende el otro idioma. While we're at it, you can learn the other language as, as well. Es un beneficio de sintonizarse con nuestro ministerio. Eh, ministerio. It's a benefit, an added benefit, I should add, uh, of uh, tuning in to our ministry. Hello everyone, God bless you. Um, I'm starting early today. This is Reverend Dr. Gilberto Rosado, by the way, for those who don't know yet who I am. Um, I started early today. I'm on summer vacation, by the way. Let me just stop it. Estoy en las vacaciones del verano. Y estoy usando este tiempo para avanzar en los trabajos que tengo, los proyectos que tengo. Um, but I said, so I'm, I'm uh, using my off time to catch up on the, some projects that I had, um, I couldn't get to finish. Um, and so I'm going to finish throughout this uh, summer period. 
um, as well as prepare for the fall, uh, Arithmetic University for the fall, which is a major project preparing for the university classes uh, every summer. Uh, so those are the things that we're working on here. And uh, what you just saw was a one of my um, uh, Microsoft uh, phones that are decommissioned, but I've uh, found uh, uh, a way to use the camera on it and incorporate it as another shot throughout the uh, my teaching. So I'm going to try that. It's the quality isn't as good as this camera, you know, but it's still another shot and it helps break up some of the monotony, I guess, because I can be monotonous, can't I, guys? Okay, um, so, and today, what we're going to do today, todavía usando este tiempo para avanzarme en los trabajos y proyectos que tengo para hacer, y estoy introduciendo un cámara nuevo que es un teléfono ya decomisionado, Uh, pero como tiene cámara, no es de la alta calidad que esta es, que me están viendo ahora, pero es otro, otro ángulo y quizás rompe un poco la monotonía, porque soy monótono, ¿verdad? <risa> Dos horas de mí es bastante. Ok, so, otro ángulo, otra perspectiva. Um, what I'm doing today, I, I'm live, I'm going to, yeah, let me see, I'm checking myself, yeah, I'm still, I'm alive, I'm still live, uh, so what I'm going to do today is, since I have all this work to do, I figure, you know what, instead of just playing an old teaching, I'm, as you know, I'm finishing my Salvation Checkup book for release. It's been sitting for a while there. I just needed to finish up with some videos and some final proofreading and edits, which I'm going to do. But today, I'm going to work on some of the video. Um, we're making a um, we're making a e-video book. You've heard of e-books, so you know what that is a PDF, right? And uh, uh, what I I thought about a, a few years back uh, was incorporating video with an ebook. So, you know, so um, I thought that would be great. Um, I love multimedia, and uh, because we're into cognitive uh, mentoring and the cognitive sciences, uh, also multimedia is a good thing to have. So we, so one of the things I want to do is always to incorporate video inside a, a, a book, inside an e-book. Um, and this is coming. It's not that it's something that won't be happening. It will be happening, folks. But I got my early version here. So we, we, we you know, we thought about uh, ways of putting this into an ebook, and so basically, what I figured to do was to put an ebook into another application, and also the videos, and then also then have the ebook refer to a video number by numbers. You know, like they do the reference marks. You look at the references. Well, in my book, Salvation Checkup, when you see a reference mark, uh, you will. Uh, if you are using the e-video book, you simply just press the button that the reference corresponds to and it will play the video reference. And if you have the physical book or just the e-book, uh, then at the end of the e-book there's a list, a reference list, where you can just, uh, if you're using the e-book, copy and paste that YouTube, the video, which would probably be on YouTube, uh, into your browser and then see the video uh, or if you are uh, in the PDF you can just click it and it will open up the browser itself and play the video so uh, that's basically it and the idea is to bring in more multimedia into the reading experience so this is sort of what I'm what I had thought about years ago actually and and the Salvation Checkup will be my first uh, book, really, incorporating that technology. 
So this uh, and um, uh, I think the book lends well to it. And a little bit about the book. The book is um, is made uh, to be an uh, easy read. It's definitely not a theological book, although it does uh, it does deal with theological questions. Uh, but it's a basic um, uh, a light reading material, what I would call light reading. It has some except, uh, excerpts from some of my more deeper books. Um, the um, and so it, I do bring in some of that information as, uh, and you'll see it as a separate uh, reference input or or, or uh, injection an excerpt that's put right into the text. Uh, so that's, um, uh, that's the weightier that it gets. Uh, but basically anyone should be able to read this book. It's a great challenge for young minds, um, especially with the excerpts that I put in. But all, you know, all people really, and all, basic all ages that appreciate uh, uh, study and reference uh, material, would be able to read this book. It's uh, uh, the main emphasis of the main um, premise of the book, or its uh, its uh, context was actually a teaching that I was giving. It's a transcription from video of a live teaching that I did on the fly. So that's why I'm saying it's easy reading because it's just basically. It's just uh, me talking and teaching uh, with with all that that involves. Obviously, um, that is what's entailed in that. Um, and let me just correct some of that text there for you. So that is all that's involved in that. Uh, so the book is um, uh, highly recommended, and it challenges your religious thinking. And for people that, to whom it matters, to whom truth matters, say, because this is a book that's going to challenge your faith. It's going to challenge your belief. Um, and, it's, uh, and if you're not really up to dealing with truth, then, you know, this book poses for you some difficulties. But it really, you know, if you're going to believe, you should believe in things that are true. So that's the premise. Are we going to believe in something? Uh, if you're going to have belief and faith, etc., etc., then shouldn't it be on things that are true? And so that's the question. And everybody says that they know the truth, that they, they love the truth, and they didn't know the truth. But the question is, do you really? You know, what, what is the basis of upon which you're saying or thinking or believing that what you uh, know is the truth indeed? So that's where this book is, is, is focused on. And again, it's in a light speaking type of tone because that's actually where it originated from. Um, so we're going to, uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, work on this, uh, some edits in, um, on screen here with you because, uh, you know, time is of essence. So instead of just playing a video, let me play some video and then actually do some work. Um, so I'm going to check up on... Sorry about that. Let me just, I have to make some corrections here. So I'll be dropping out and coming back in a moment. Okay, I, I'm maintaining now voice so you can hear my audio. Um, this was left uh, apparently undone from before. And then we have um, 
looking for what we're going to be working on for you to see. Um, so we're going to be using AVS. This is a bit like uh, some of the uh, demo videos you may see on YouTube and whatnot. Uh, so this is basically going to be uh, like one of those things. Uh, you will get some teaching. I'm going to be talking through the video uh, as it plays. Um, you'll be watching uh, actual teaching that I did. Um, plus, you'll be um, getting um, you'll be uh, getting some commentary from me on that so let me I'm going to add in my picture now so that you can see me on screen Alrighty. and again I'm doing everything myself so uh, this is uh, you can understand that things take a while uh, given the parameters that I, I'm, I have to work with Okay, so here I be, and now we can basically get on with our uh, video. So, one of the things that we're going to do today is we're going to load in a video about truth. Again, the book uh, Salvation Checkup is all about verifying what truth is you know verifying that do you in fact have the truth so let's uh, let's uh, try to find this uh, video now and bring it in although I should have had this as a project I'm not sure let me let me check if I did save this as a, a recent project, a recent reopen project. And here we have self. Okay, so this should be it here. It may not be the video that we're looking for, but uh, truth and lies. Yes. So this is the video here. And uh, forgive us if we crash during the, uh, if we crash at any time, it, that's always a possibility. So let's start this video up here a little bit. And the video just came in, so... All right, that's a little music for you. So I don't know if you're seeing or able to see I'm not sure if you're able to see, able to see the video on the screen, uh, because in my monitor, uh, you're not able to, I'm not able to see it, so I don't know if you're seeing what I can see in terms of the video, but I, can, I do know you can hear it. So, only one problem here that I have to figure out, and that is 
and uh, how to hear no. myself. No, you so, broke. Yeah. I'm gonna have to connect to my yeah. uh, headphone. Hold pen to cast Again, at any moment we can crash, so just uh, bear in mind and that uh, we will come back on. And uh, now adjusting. Testing one, two, three. I will be adjusting for the sound, so I'm not just uh, getting the speaker system running. I haven't tested these uh, these headphones yet either. So it does sound like it should be working, but I'm not getting any sound. Test. Testing one, two. Okay, now I'm getting the sound. Okay. Now if I get if I can get any sound from the program here. Okay, remember the uh, the program is working. There's like two or three things working at the same time here. So things might sound a little choppy. All right. So, if you hear the video from if you hear the video and you hear it choppy, you know why it is. It's just a memory consumption. And it's uh, still buffering into the system. I'm going to monitor I'm monitoring on the YouTube channel on my other computer. 
uh, just to see what you guys are seeing. And I see that the video is not showing. What I'm going to do is reset the uh, screen capture for it. Uh, and configure that. Again, this is an experiment for us on a Sunday, particularly. We're broadcasting on over four different streaming platforms. Uh, so the system is taxed to its limits, I think. So again, it has to allocate power to essentials and try to accomplish everything it needs to do. Okay, so your quality in the video may be suffering. So those watching by the live stream All right, so it's too much memory for the broadcast and the computer video streaming and recording, because I'm actually recording all of this at the same time. It's a lot of things this computer is working at. So it's getting feeds from the other computer. It's getting from the phone that you're seeing me now on. It has its other two cameras attached. Everything's feeding in. Uh, the program, the video editing program is working, competing for priority uh, of processing. It's all working. But of course, certain things take precedence. They need more power. And so what I wanted, I imagined that I would be able to do through the Sunday broadcast and I could get away with on a regular broadcast where I only do one channel um, because I've done similar things. Uh, but with one channel, I, I, I could do the screencasting and stuff like that. Um, but the Sunday broadcast is... It's a big broadcast, and it's a high, it's a high um, strain on the memory uh, of the computer, uh, the studio computer, to uh, take care of all the feeds. So that's understandable. So uh, what I'm going to do, rather than to do that, is actually just play the video and. Um, find uh, where I'm going to um, place I'm going to make a written note of, of things that I want to add into my into Salvation Check of my book so that's what we're going to do now I'm just going to play the video straight um, <clears throat> and I'm, I'm deciding which way uh, to do that best so that we can all see that. Um, but in any case, let me just find that video now. And, um,
Salvation Checkup, a little bit more about the book. Uh, Salvation Checkup uh, what is, I feel that it's a powerful book and will help many people clarify, solidify their faith. Uh, and others to really and revisit their faith, and that's the intended purpose of the book. It's, it's the book is to actually, it's like a medical checkup. Actually, go and and check what is it that you feel. Why do you feel that you're saved, or that you're right? You know. So I think that the book is uh, it's a great tool and will be used as a tool at least for this our church. To help other people uh, really, you know, get their feet on the on the ground as regards to what they believe, what their faith is. Um, and we were looking for a video which was given during baptism classes. That video's name is. Uh, begins with truth and lies. I'm going to try to get that title here because it contains a few things that I want to add into into the salvation check of the e video book that we have. And let me go try and look for that. I'm sure. I'm sorry if anyone's waiting for Spanish. Um, try to send me a note if that's something that you need, or if one of the groups um, can give us a call here. Uh, this is the quickest way. Let me know that you have Spanish people in the audience. Otherwise, do some translation over there. On the fly, I think the video has some Spanish translation in it, but I, like I said, I'll be interrupting the video, stopping it, pausing it uh, to make certain comments. And again, I'm looking at the screen with all these little letters. Uh, uh, and there's so many videos here, so let me just uh, take a moment. Because also you're you're rushing and, and then you you just run right over it. Yeah, it should be where it says for some reasons. And this uh, on this video, I had worked on it yesterday. Uh, we needed to change it from one format to another. Let me see if I can. Uh, Coax it out of the video player. Let me see if it's an open recent media. That's the way to get this through here. Yeah. Nah, it's not. It's not showing as something that we played in. We did play it.
I'm sure I've gone over it two or three times already. And it just misses it because it has so many. Right, so it's it's not in this list, and I, I I can't see it in this list. It has to be in another area, which we're going to head over to. Um, and um, it should be in our video archives. I'm just going by memory, where it should have been, would have been seen. Something you know that I can remember. No, it's not there. It's not where it is. That's amazing. It's amazing when you need to find something. Um, you don't. Let me look in the modern time. Cast and. Uh, So it could be uh, if I can't find it now, I'll just do a search a search for it. I'm gonna sort by date and there's nothing let's see there's nothing uh recent here, so um we're going to just have to do a, a search. Um, I'm pretty sure it's in memory here, so in the archives um, production back. I mean, just look for truth here. It should pop up with this. Okay, and um, yeah, truth and lies again. I don't know why uh, it didn't pop up when I was looking for it. It's in there someplace. Um, I can see if I can open up in its folder. Oh, open the folder if I, if it allows me to. And open file location because I I need to see where it's at. Ah, no wonder. Okay, it wasn't where I I'm, I had it confused with the um, the other two videos which we did upload to YouTube, and those were baptism class videos. So this one is a Sunday teaching, so that's why uh, we were looking in the wrong place. All right, so now since we have found where it is, let's get and play this. Truth. And again, we have to put a date modified. And try to find. Truth. I see that. I'm going to help us here. The same issue is happening now where the letters are so small and there are so many videos here <laughs> that we can't find it. Truth, allies, is that it? No, no, it's not. Right. There he goes. Truth. Uh, the name of the video originally is Truth and Lies and Teaching Naturally. Um, so we're going to click on that. I'm going to see if we can feed it through to you. So give me another moment while we... 
try to get that going on your screen. Um, is that a do the screen thing here? So let me change over. Screen capture, a moment. Uh, so many little details here. Really, it's a full time job for anyone. Absolutely. Okay, so that should be the video, should start up in there. So we'll see if, it, yeah, that is the VLC player. All right, so we're just going into So I'm, I'm just trying to have it play for you. There's obviously not, doesn't look like it's playing. So these are things I have to work through. Um, so I'm going to uh, just create another shot. Sorry for all these complex things we're going through, but uh, we're doing this on the fly. And what I'm going to do is just add it in this is Sunday just it should be here we're going to add it in as a video file and just throw it in straight um, and again this is the uh, first time we're actually trying to do this sort of thing on the Sunday broadcast so uh, forgive us for the uh, learning curve here Okay, so we're going to put that in. Okay, hold on, folks. We're... Um, this video uh, delays in playing, so uh, we'll take this time and add in. The problem with this is that you'll have to see the whole thing without any controlling, uh, unless I can fool around with it here, but we'll see. Um, well, that is loading in. Okay, and that video will uh, move in, uh, come in shortly.
on two Facebook separate place Facebook pages. Okay. So there's like, and we should be. And I have to look, was up, look at in that, but we should be on the help app too. So that will make five so easily five different places where this broadcast is viewable. And we praise God for that. Uh, en la nuestra calculaciones debe haber ya como cinco lugares diferentes, cinco maneras diferentes de okay. conectarse a este programación. Que es para la gloria de Dios eh, que por las razones de la semana pasada, la, las dificultades que hubo, pues hice unos ajustes, pero esos ajustes pues ayudan para extender también son los problemas los desafíos ayuden a extendernos amen y ampliar so we see here an, a live example of how difficulties the difficulties we had last week <coughs> will cause us to expand and extend and find other ways and then therefore add other other venues to our uh, broadcast to bring the message of salvation, of liberation, of victory out to all the world and we thank God for that. In addition that we're already working on our Roku channel uh, which is a Roku, so it's a TV box, like a cable box that feeds uh, internet channels to people's TVs all around the United States and, and other places. So we'll already applied and got approved for submitting our channel to that network. It's like a satellite network except it's on the box. Estamos trabajando también para, hemos sido aprobado para el canal en Roku que es una cajita como de cable pero yeah, we have usa to get el back internet, to that en vez thing. de cable independiente okay. usa el internet para eh, dar canales a, las, a los televisores, hay millares de hogares que usan esa, ese servicio y gracias a Dios vamos a estar desarrollando el canal nuestro en ese, en ese eh, red y tener nuestra programación también eh, disponible a través de aquellos hogares que tienen esa caja y cualquiera de ustedes también puede ordenar esa caja es un servicio disponible mundialmente y particularmente aquí en los Estados Unidos, Estados Unidos. Eh, las canales grandes también usan ese servicio, so, estamos ahí entrando con la gente grande, ¿eh? lo, 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 los um, programadores y compañías grandes de eh, comunicaciones, so, estamos, we're getting there, getting to where the big boys are in terms of communication, so we praise God for that and uh, help us all as well with your prayers. Now let's get right into the teaching of today. Vamos a entrar a la enseñanza de hoy And here we go que se encuentra en Génesis 45 as I, as, as I explained to you before uh, we are in Genesis 45 1 to 28 okay and today uh, today the title of the teaching like de hoy tiene como título uh, Dios me ha enviado antes de usted para preservar vida God sent me before you to preserve life Amen God and to just to explain what, what went on before this moment uh, Testing one, two, three. Uh, there is an echo. Thank you. 
Not a little details. Hold on just for a second. Testing. Testing one, two, three. Okay. And the echo might be on my end, it could be on your end. I don't know. Operation of victory. Out to all the world, and we thank God for that. And already working on our Roku channel, uh, which is a Roku, so it's a TV box, like a cable box that feeds uh, internet channels to people's states and places. It's like a satellite network except it's on the box. Estamos trabajando también para a comer, comer, y ellos comieron allí, ellos comieron allí, y todo. He met this little brother, Benjamin, estaba con ellos al fin. Everybody right. just got hungry, right? Y we see in, in chapter 44, en el capítulo 44, vemos que él, ellos regresaron, empezaron a regresar. What Joseph did in, in, in 44, we're going to see in 44, was to send still on two Facebook separate page, Facebook pages okay. so there's like and we uh, should be uh, testing was alright so uh, basically what we are looking for is uh, parts of that video to place into uh, the salvation checkup so that's what we're doing we're trying to do and trying to broadcast to you all at the same time and it's really just a big mess as you can see so it's very difficult even if I have my ears on here the uh, hip headphone slight delay really throws a person for a loop so it's a lot of complications in broadcasting uh, so it's a hard work especially you you have to do all this alone in my situation I, I have to do all of this work alone and it's hard work it's just hard it's uh, so many different details and aspects and and uh, we don't have switches but you might as well have had hundreds of switches on the wall that I gotta go and and figure out which one to press so that things can flow again it, it can get it can get it's that serious because every every little detail has to be right and I'm not complaining about that. It's a good thing. You know, uh, one of the things we deal with is uh, cognitive mentoring, helping, helping children and adults improve their ability to think and reason and figure out solutions to problems. So this is what, this is the stuff right here. And see, what would other people do? Many other people would just give it up. You know, I so said, why go through all of this stress? Why go through all of this pain? And you have other people watching, which all they would do is, is, is criticize. Because it seems that that's their specialty. It's, critic it's being critical. It's criticizing others, you know. And, you know, and, and the criticism is good. It's it's good because at least okay, it's like telling me you know something's wrong. But realize that if I already re see it that there's something wrong, that you're redundant. 
<laughs> There's no need to point out what I obviously already realized. Uh, and if you can't understand why, because you, the question is, why is this going on? Why is uh, why is he going through all that? If that's your question, it means really that you just don't understand. That's what it means. You don't understand. So you're asking why. Uh, people who know understand why. They don't bother to ask. They just hope that uh, the person going through this will get through it on the better side of the other side, right? On, on the better for the experience. And that's why some of us and God look at people doing things and we're silent. You know, it's not that you know we understand and we, and what and the, what we understand more is that you need to learn and you need to go through these experiences in order to improve what you're doing improve yourself educate yourself right to experience and become better at whatever you're doing or a better person so that's the reason for the, the silence, that it's really what should be had. And that criticism uh, when the person already knows. Now, if a person is, is confused, you see, they're confused, they don't know what they're doing, and, and they get frustrated, and then, then the, you can come in. And then it's appropriate to come in and say something. You know, I <laughs> say, so, wait, what are you doing? This is all wrong. What you're doing is all wrong. You know, uh, you, this is the way. It's A, B, C, D, whatever it is. Then you go and point out instruction, you know, because the person is, the person needs the criticism now so that he knows that this action and this thinking and this, and this um, process that they engaged in was the wrong way to do it. And then where they made that mistake in judgment or in, in yeah, in adjustment or judgment. It's all the issue of judgment. Uh, so, yes, that's the point of being critical. Um, but some people, uh, you know, you just don't realize that. Your, your lack of understanding, what, it's what makes critical analysis into criticism. The person that criticizes... Uh, maliciously, you know, just, criti just criticizes, uh, is a person that lacks understanding. Uh, a person that's helpful and, and, is, and critiques is different, you see, because that, that person is trying to be helpful. Uh, so then that's critiquing, that's a welcome criticism. Uh, so there's, there is a difference. But some people think they're smart because they criticize others. That doesn't make you smart. It just reveals that you're you're as dumb-witted as they are, just in a different area. You're 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 dumb-witted as a, as a, in terms of trying to teach somebody, teaching someone that they're in error, as the person is in whatever they're doing. Because you're both you're both wrong. Um, if you to bring to the person some information. And uh, a suggestion, you know, and and the person that, and also you as an individual, if you're the one doing the error, should say, critique me. What what is it I'm doing wrong? Go ahead and don't spare anything. Just tell me how like it is. Then the person critiquing his, you know, will say, you know, he wants to learn. He or she wants to learn. You see, and so now I'm going to give them a free education, which is always the best thing. Why pay? Right. So again, uh, so this is the way it's supposed to work. And uh, not be afraid to do new things. Not be afraid to try new things. You know, uh, just try to do them and do them as best as you can and learn. There's nothing. It's not just to do whatever you want to do, no matter how it comes out. You know, this is not what I did today. It did matter to me how it came out. Uh, but I did understand from the onset that it was going to be very complicated. As you can see, every little thing I did to try to compensate really was not adequate. It was not adequate, um, and there are certain parameters 
with the software and the hardware that is was causing conflict um, and also the inability to really monitor the, the real the first problem is being the sole operator here I'm the teacher I'm the studio engineer I'm the production manager I'm the director uh, I guess in a regular TV show or even a ministry broadcast you will have you know a handful or uh, two or three handful of people doing the handling different parts of what I'm doing alone and by myself so that is obviously part of the problem that's you know someone critiquing me who knows would say you know well Reverend you just need some staff here with you <laughs> you need someone to handle audio you need someone to handle the the video transition you need someone to handle the media what you're going to use the video coming in and 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 you know handling all this like all the other guys the other guys look good the other guys look good because they they have people doing all the things for them you see i'm the only one who looks like a slob <laughs> because i'm doing it all myself but you know what i, I enjoy it you know be, and i can i can do it i can learn and 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 do things better later i'm not afraid of that you see and because i'm not afraid to look bad um i can do a lot of things and so, as people are so afraid to look bad they don't do anything there's people who are the opposite they're, they're too afraid to look bad or that so that what happens is that they don't do anything see they're just trying to keep appearances I'm not that way I, I can't live life that way you know to enter my grave without having tried to do anything is ridiculous and how who would be a good servant of the Lord right if you didn't do service to the Lord you just, you just didn't do anything because you didn't want to look foolish in, in the eyes of, of people which is something people try to do they try to make you uh, make you feel bad they criticize you they uh, label you to try to humble you well not humble you to uh, to patronize you is, is the correct word um, and to humble your uh, your humble your presence in the eyes of others or put you down in other words putting you down in front of other people especially like you have in the forums your groups in on facebook um where the bible discussion is being had uh you should have seen them uh, part of what we do in social evangelizer these guys out there who uh, cannot respond to the great arguments that I pose and questions that I pose, they're they're just kind of, they just turn away their focus from the point and they start attacking my person like if they know me. They try to find anything anything they can muster possibly in their imagination because they don't know me. So it's all imagination and fabrication. Uh, to try to uh, make me look bad in front of others there you know and I think it's so shallow and I pointed out I said you know I'm not the topic of this discussion yes and, and and the funny thing is that the things they use are so erroneous and I point out their errors and now since now you're wrong here let's get back to the other place that you're wrong as well and trying to bring them back to where they need to be in the discussion but that's always the tactic of a person who does not know um, they don't have any more uh, to support their beliefs since they're not interested in the truth then they resort to putting you down and, and that is always done by people who have nothing and so that's why we always taught you here at the, in the church 
we've always taught you that don't allow people to put you down. In other words, no one can do that because they don't know you. You know, they don't know your mother. Now, you went to school, you know what that means, right? They don't know your mother. So why are you getting angry when they say your mother is this and your mother is that and your mother eats this and your mother chews that? Why are you upset? You know, I taught my boys here all the time. Hey, listen, is that true? Is it true what they said? Does your mother do that? Does your mother wear this? <laughs> is your mother that fat? <laughs> <laughs> and they say, of course, no. I say, so why are you getting upset? See, see, you, you, if you get upset, what you're saying is, hey, you know, don't talk about my mother, right? Don't talk about my mother. So what, you, what are you saying? That that is your mother. <laughs> you are admitting that they, they're talking about your mother. They don't expect me to talk about this today. They are talking about your mother, and you are admitting it. <laughs> that's all that's happening there, folks. And that's why you shouldn't respond. You should not admit that they're talking about your mother. Because you, what you need, if, if they're talking about somebody that's not even there, well, what is your, what should be your response? Somebody's talking about an imaginary person. And then, on top of that, they're looking at you like that person came with you to school today. So, what is that? Is that, isn't that crazy? So, why aren't you looking at them like they're crazy? These are crazy freaks out there. You should be horrified. You should look at them. You thought, hey, hey, Fred, listen, did, did you forget your medication today? You forgot your medicine? Because you're talking crazy. You're talking, yes, you're out of your mind. Oh, look at it. Look at it. You're talking crazy. You see? And that's it. And you will see that there's that they're so put off base with that because you're not you're not following them in their lunacy talking about your ma <laughs> which they don't know, but you, you you're not realizing that. So that is something you know, I've always taught the kids here, you know, don't fall for that old trick. It's it's just silliness. So don't fall for that at all. But we get that even when we're exposing the gospel of Jesus Christ online, and you're going to get that a lot. But you need to know how to respond. I see a lot of Christians, they don't want to join those Bible discussion groups because they, they feel it's a waste of time, uh, you know, they and they get criticized so much. You know, some of these people are really mean to you. Um, but that again is just a lack of ability to ignore what is doesn't have anything to do with the discussion. To ignore the uh, labels they're trying to label you with, and to stay on topic. That's a thing. Uh, that's called stay on topic and many of the forums and groups speak to that it's uh, one of the uh, code of ethics if you will and it's it's part of the rules in many forums and on many of the Facebook groups that you stay on topic and so that is the correct etiquette anyone that doesn't stay on topic is a person who is lacking understanding. So obviously, if they lack understanding, what are they going to tell other, other people about Bible and about God and about anything? They say they know the truth. Really? You don't even know how to follow the rules. Sorry. Uh, they didn't even know how to follow the rules. So you're going to follow them. And I love it because the ones who do that most are the ones that talk about 
following the commandments of God. Or you can't even follow the commandments of this Bible discussion group. <laughs> you got to follow the Ten Commandments, really? And you can't follow the one rule to stay on topic? So that that's uh, that's another. I, just, I get these ideas for memes. That's going to be another meme I'm going to make <laughs> for social evangelizer. You're telling me to follow the Ten Commandments, but you can't follow the the forum rules, the group rules. Stay on topic. <laughs> you know who's fooling who here. So, like I said, this is. You need to go into the crux of the matter. People just need to educate themselves and go into the crux of the matter. The point. Because that's what the point is. Stay on top. You see? And, and that destroys their credibility. It destroys their argument. They don't have anything to stand on. They can keep calling you all the names they want. But other people... Reading and looking, they'll see this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. This guy has no way, didn't answer the question, didn't reply to him correctly, and now he's just creating all this flat. See? Trying to avoid having to deal with the truth. And it becomes so obvious when a person doesn't want to deal with truth. It's as simple as that. So, um, so this is the reality of things. And uh, like I was saying when we started about the crit critiquing and, 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 uh, and, and using um, and feeling inferior or subjugated or feeling attacked by people because of their own lack of understanding should never be suffered. You should never, ever allow yourself to be affected by people who lack understanding. Simply. And really, and what I'm, what we're working is at is educating society. Because society, I mean, you, we are not going to progress as a race until we get these old problems settled already. How many generations have to come and go? And we are still uh, getting upset because so-and-so said this to me and about my mother and about my family they never met? Ridiculous. This is the state of the human race. And we see it in the government. We see it in the politics even still today. It is sad, simply sad. But this church is standing in the breach, and we're providing teaching as much as we can, uh, even though we're criticized for it. Here's another thing that happened today. Uh, I woke up this morning, and I, I go to start to try to get all this mess that occurred before to work. And uh, I read a Facebook uh, comment on one of my posts. Um, I believe it was uh, from my post I did yesterday. And then this fellow from this other country, uh, he tells me, he puts in his post, he did this around two or three times already. And he seems to be chasing down my posts about uh, social evangelizer <laughs> to say the same comment. Uh, this comment is this one. <laughs> that the government authorities of this so-so country have disallowed this program. <laughs> and then he puts it in his, his broken English type of way. Uh, because uh, no, it, it says um, I put I post this on uh, practically what I understood was he's chasing down my post so that uh, his other friends uh, would uh, know the uh, warning from their government. So basically, is what I understood from them uh, uh, broken English. <laughs> so now I have a whole government 
opposing my work. <laughs> and I look, Ma, I'm on top of the world. <laughs> I have governments against me. <laughs> Lord, I made it. I made it. I'm a, I'm a geopolitical figure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. You know, I just say, Lord, have mercy. I'm, you know, and again, you can, you can, somebody would say, well, this guy's just trolling your post. Um, he, this is a criticism of who you are and what you do. <laughs> I say, great, because, what you know, it just tickles me. I love it. I, I just loved it. I love it because it's just that now we're going up. We've, we've graduated. Don't you see? I've graduated from these simple-minded folks here and there that you deal with day to day. And now i got government. A government. A whole country against Reverend Rosado. <laughs> Oh, oh my Lord have mercy You know this is it I'm public enemy number one <laughs> hey, Over there <laughs> So I, I, What can I say And it's just the beginning That's the fun part This is just I'm only beginning Lord have mercy Just wait till I actually get all of my stuff out there <laughs> Ah, oh Lord, I'm busy. You see, so that gave me a great tickle this morning, and so you know, I, I'm just, I just praise God. That's what, what else can be done. <laughs> I praise God that now I have a whole government, uh, you know, against what I'm doing. And and mind you, what it is, mind you, what it is of all the things that I do and have done already. Mind you, what it is that's causing a whole government to declare against this project. It's social evangelizing. You see that? It's a program to, sh to share the gospel powerfully. Of, you know, in a great and mighty way, effectively, throughout all the nations. You know? so, so this is a, this is a serious thing. <laughs> and so now one government has taken the lead. I'm happy for that government because in something they have taken the lead. They have been the first one. And I and I even commented with a that smiley face with the tears coming out, you know, of laughter, right? Crying out loud, right? And then I put in the flag of Senegal, oh, that country. I'm going to say Senegal. I'm going to say because you're going to see it on the Facebook post. Senegal. And I said, you know, that's it. This is number one. They've declared war against the Reverend Dr. Gilberto Rosado. Yeehaw! And so this is it. This is what you, you know, listen. It's, and, and you know what that has done for me? It's given me a great step up, and I thank them for that. Because now, I'm going to play that to the hilt. <laughs> I'm going to use it. It's the Reverend Dr. Rosado, the one that a whole government has disallowed. The man who's created programs that a whole government have, have disallowed and come against and take, you know, so... This is a big deal. This is Bochich. <laughs> I just love it. It's just great. And well, you see, now this is the way I'm handling uh, opposition. See the way that opposition is to be handled. Is I'm I'm, I'm going to do the the you know that 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 kung fu type of thing. You know, use their force against them. You know, so you know you think you're coming against me. You you're only doing is helping. Me. And so I thank the government of Senegal for their assistance in uh, propelling uh, my work and efforts, uh, especially with uh, social evangelizing.
because they are totally against that program. Santos as Señor, and as more and more of, of the countries come to realize what that program represents, I expect more and more to join the bandwagon, uh, and even the New York Times and CNN to come against social evangelizer. <laughs> I, I made the big time. That's all I could say. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm having fun with it because basically that's what you should have. Uh, the enemy comes. I'm not saying that the government of Senegal is the enemy. The, uh, you know, it's just simply that they're doing what they're doing. They think they're right and that's fine. But it's just hilarious. It's just so hilarious. And, and we don't even know if it's a sure, if it's a absolute, a, a true government official statement or anything. But I'm just going with it. Why not? You know? <laughs> it's just great. I love it. I just love the idea. It's just a wonderful thing. So it's, I'm trying to help people to help them get out of their misery and the government of Senegal doesn't want anything to do. So, you know, there's so many ways that you got, you can look at this. It's incredible that the government doesn't want their people to be independent. <laughs> you know, and it's funny because most of the, uh, the economy in Senegal is, is based on resources. Of course, the government is the one that's going to be controlling those resources. And who's the one though digging it out for them? The people, which of course they disallow to uh, use my program. <laughs> you see the conflict there? You know, there's a lot of ways that we got we can look at this. And um, so I guess this is preparation that the Lord is permitting us to prepare us for future things like this and, and, and other battles that we're going to face. It's just simple. If we thought that doing the will of God was going to be done without any conflict, without any opposition, then you were wrong. We're going to have to deal with a lot of conflict and a lot of opposition. The enemy will try all he can do to destroy the work of God. The true work of God and his true church. So that is absolute. That is going to be what's going to be coming down. And, you know, and that's that. Doesn't change what I'm going to do, what I've already done. And all I'm doing is really releasing the things that have already been uh, worked on. And it's just the time has come to let that go. And so they're going to go in a big way. I'll we'll tell you right now. Uh, so this is it. It just tickles me to have uh, to have finally t ticked someone off. Uh, I ticked the government off. You know, <laughs> I have many people who oppose me, uh, individuals who oppose uh, my person, who oppose my ministry, and oppose the teaching. You know, the teachings of God, the teachings of the Scripture have always uh, dealt with opposition, and his prophets have always dealt with opposition. But I finally made it to the big time, folks. Praise God. I think the church can praise God. I made it, pastor made it to the big time. Now a government is opposing him. <laughs> God. Oh, wow. Santos and Señor, this is uh, incredible. I've just been minding my own business, really. <laughs> actually been minding my own business. <laughs> this is another one that uh, Salvation Checkup, a book, you gotta be careful now, Senegal. <laughs> that book, watch out. And here, Understanding the Bible and Religious Philosophy. This was a killer. <laughs> this was a killer. I'm I'm going I'm expecting major uh, uh, pullback, I call it, or a major um, offensive to be mounted against this book here, 
this this book and the church <laughs> that utilizes it to win souls for Christ, uh, a major pushback is expected from uh, governments worldwide. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so we got to expect that. Um, because this is just outrageous that someone's actually gonna, going to help people understand the Bible and cut through all the gook of religious philosophy that is, it has uh, uh, confused and divided uh, the masses. And so this book represents a grave danger to the governments of the world, right here. <laughs> because they want to fool the people. They use religion also as a panacea to calm people, to control the people. But now the truth is out. So come against me. <laughs> that was the Reverend Zada. Why you do that? He can't leave things alone. Our government alone. We just want people to dig up the diamonds and that's it. Go home and open their Bibles. That's it. The, the Reverend Rosado had to come and tell the truth. <laughs> See? It's the same thing they did with Jesus. Crucify. They said, come disturbing the peace. See, we had a good thing going till Jesus came and had to spill the beads. See, so that is what's happening, folks. So we're going to ask the church to pray. I mean, what, what can we do? <laughs> let's let's pray together and get ready because this is I I'm 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 have to set up now my computer for a missile defense system around this house. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have to defend ourselves against the government of Senegal and other major governments of the world. <laughs> yeah, they come to attack me. And my book, Salvation Checkup, oh my goodness, and Understanding the Bible, Religious Philosophy. This is the, the poses the greatest danger to the planet. <laughs> and then, of course, Salvation, uh, sorry, uh, social evangelizer. This is just, it was just, a, Facebook already attacked me. You see, you got to understand what's happening. <laughs> Facebook already shut my account down, my first account. They shut it down on a Sunday when I'm preaching to all the masses. It's a total devastation, which they, uh, they did on my account. See, if there was anybody who knows any legal thing or whatnot, um, they cut off my broadcast, shut that account down, and now they wiped that account clean. And I had to start over. But this time when I start over, I'm not going to spend my time anymore because Facebook wants you to put your name, your telephone number, your your waist size, uh, your, you know, how tall you are, what school you went to, what people you know, you know, all this personal information. They want you to spend your time of your life to answer their questions and fill out your profile so that they can send you advertising. But they don't give you any, any leeway. <laughs> And any way to communicate to them when they're trying to, when they're cutting you down, so I I find that unfair, totally unfair, and that's what they did to me. They cut me all down, um, and at that point when they cut me down, I was reaching uh, close to a million people on Sundays with the teaching, with this broadcast. That's when they cut me down. You see what happened? You see that? Now you're going to tell me that's coincidence? Right? And now the government of Senegal is against you? <laughs> yeah. This is, this is coming down. This is going down right now. Okay? We're in a war. And <laughs> we're in a war. 
and we are dealing with the big guys here. Okay? And Facebook, hey, that's a world power. <laughs> and, and the government of Senegal, listen, it's still a government. It's, it, there's land in Africa where they occupy and they control. So we're talking serious here. This church is in serious contention in the, on this planet. So, uh, but all kidding aside, you know, I'm having fun with all of this. But um, the, the truth be told, listen, what we're doing is important. And the enemy is going to, has been, and will continue to try to close us down and to buffet us. And some of our brethren, they don't understand. They didn't understand this during the time that we were developing. Um, you know, we were getting buffeted and many of our brethren left. They were not strong and determined enough to maintain themselves faithful to this fight. But those of you that have remained faithful, you see what's going on. Now you see that we attack on our members was the beginning. Then now uh, an attack on my Facebook, uh, cutting my ability to reach out to the millions of people that we were uh, approaching quickly. And then, um, and now the government of Senegal. <laughs> <laughs> but, the, it, but we realize it's just, it's just the first government. It's the first government to get out there and say something. And, uh, and so now that they did it, other governments will, will, will fall in line as well. In other words, other governments will follow their lead. <laughs> Since they had the audacity to come against Pastor Rosado here then others will follow their lead. So that's what we were expecting uh, to see. And uh, really, in, in a, on a serious note, you know, we need to prepare. The church needs to prepare because this is what's going to be happening more and more and more. More governments uh, will come against uh, purveyors of truth and teachers of truth uh, and they're going to start attacking. Uh, and that doesn't mean that all of us are in the truth. That's, that's not what I implied. Well, I know that Jehovah's Witnesses are having their issue in Russia. Russia, I believe, shut them down there. I believe. It's what I, 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 I believe I can recall from certain comments here and there. And I believe there's an article on that. Um, and again, I'm not, Saying that yes, just because they're getting attacked, and that means mean that they are the organization of Jehovah. <laughs> uh, <coughs> uh, that's not what I'm saying. But obviously, I'm not doing anything like that. You know, uh, they have definite accusations against them, and I have. There's nothing against me. It's nothing that the government of Senegal is is a can saying. <clears throat> it's just simply they don't like my perfume. <laughs> it's just simply that. It's just uh, a contention um, and, and based on whatever it is they are thinking about, which they have no knowledge of my program at all to say, to make a determination. They have not requested my software. They have not seen what I am teaching in the software, anything like that, they just come out and just say, based on just a, an effort of my marketing, uh, just that they were against that, the, that program. Uh, and so, again, it is just another way to uh, come against a work of God to help the people of the world, because that's what I'm doing. That's the real reason behind social evangelizer, behind the books that we're doing, uh, the ministry that we have is helping people. See, and the, the enemy doesn't want us to do that, but the way we're doing it is by educating, 
educating them. Uh, and they get educated so that they can see what the truth is in any and all things, as the Bible tells us that would happen and the way it should be. So, <clears throat> that's a dangerous thing. That's why I said understanding the Bible and, and religious philosophy was the most dangerous book ever. After the Bible, of course, but, you know, a human book. Because that's what it does. And that's how it helps people. So, other than that, um, so that's what's happening with that. And so we ask the congregation for prayer and, uh, and whatnot. But, you see, when you're doing things for God and you're doing good, uh, there are forces that are going to try to knock you out of the game. So, and that's that. Um, so I praise God, though, because he has kept me going. He's kept me alive. Because, again, if this was something that God didn't want, I would have been uh, passed away long ago. Long before I did all these videos, long before um, I'm doing, I did these books, and I've done already 30 titles I have, which form the uh, text, the core text of Arithmetic University, but uh, are t book titles in their own right. I can, I can and will, and I authorize it now in case somebody in the future stumbles across this and has that information that each of the chapters be made into a book because each one is in itself a book. Um, so, um, so that makes 30 with this salvation uh, checkup is 31. Um, the uh, three books that we're using, the two that are, we're doing cognitive science and makes it uh, 33 and 34 with understanding the Bible religious philosophy and then we uh, also have the natural success uh, series uh, of books as well the same type of thing uh, we got pretty much we're, we're getting into the 40s here I'm getting going to get up to my age in the number of books that I have um, manuscripted um, so that's a uh, that's pretty that's a good amount of writing, and I'm really just beginning um, with so many uh, things that we will be projecting. Of course, all of the videos can be converted into uh, books themselves as well. So if we're going to add all of those, all of that material and content, that's a lot. You know, I can I can see easily. I'm, I'm going to do a count on all the videos that I have, but we're talking hundreds here. So thank God for that. Um, thank God for the facility of video. Uh, because you can do a video, you have an audio with it, and transcribing it, you'll have uh, a book, at least a book, and you have a few book ideas from each and every video. You know, you the human can be very prolific in creating... Uh, resources, uh, educational resources, and whatnot very easily uh, to, in today's world. So I encourage all the brethren out there, really, there's no reason why you can't do something. Do something, for goodness sake. Everybody, you know, you, all the texting you've done, you could have done a book by now. You, just, you put all your text together. Just do that. That's a project for the summer. Something you don't have nothing to do during the summer months. Go and get all your goal through your Facebook history. Look at all your to copy them. Collect all your posts, all of them, and co paste them into a a uh, a Word document or an Open Office document. You can paste the text only. Or, or, and or, you can take a screenshot of the post, see, and you put all that, put all of that together and, and look at it. There's different things you can do. I'm going to show you something that you can do. You can take those, 
your Facebook timeline and turn that into a book. You take the screenshot, you, you crop it to your post, and that's the picture for this chapter on whatever it is you felt that day, that day your status. This and that and blah, blah, blah. You take that and you just make, add to it. You know, or sometimes some of you don't need to add to it. Sometimes you just make a book of all your posts. That's it. All the posts. If, if you have funny things, and I'm talking about things that you created. Don't make a book up because you shared someone else's picture. You shared a piece of artwork from someplace else or a meme or something. Those things you might get in trouble for like copying. So it's things that you did yourself. That's why you have to do your own stuff. It's always best. Um, but if you use Facebook and you make your own you know, text, uh, graphics, you can do that easy on your computer. Make your own text graphic and put it up there. You can do that now. now. Go through your Facebook, your statuses. And then go there and add a photo because maybe you did it without any picture or you did it with a different picture. Now do it with your own, something you made yourself. And now you have that status and your own picture that you made. And the picture could be of yourself. Well, be creative. Do something in related to the status that's interesting. And then you have a graphic that you can use just as it is on a page in a book. Or you can use it as a graphic and add a story to it or add some more background to why you felt that way that day. And you just write a few lines. You know, you don't have to do a lot of things. Don't make it a big, you know, big headache for yourself now. Just start it. Do it. And before you know it, I think a lot of you already have great books on through all the stuff you did on Facebook already. And I think that, you know, you, you guys, again, the times have given you a great opportunity to be successful, to be productive, to be, to express yourself, to progress yourself to a great degree. But I don't think you guys are, are like life. You're just wasting your time. You, there's greatness. There's potential, but you, it's just going away in the wind. You, you're wasting your life, your brain, your time. And you shouldn't, because at this time, this stage of the game, you should be able to do some great things with that. You can, so that's making a book with your Facebook, the stuff you wrote on Facebook already. And some of you write a lot of stuff. Some of you write a lot of stuff. So right now, that's one of the things I'm going to be doing is I'm going back into my Facebook and all the comments I made on, on the biblical debate uh, groups and all of that. I'm going to collect all of that and I'm going to put that in a book as well. That's another book. It's already done because... Every day I'm putting something on Facebook, I'm adding to my book. It's something we're doing and we're writing every day. See, every day we're doing something. So that's about writing a book. Now, you can make video with that same stuff. You take that post, you put it up on a video, you get your video, you know, studio, webcam, your, your laptop may have that, even on your phone, and you make a video using... The status, you can make video if you don't like writing. So that's all right. You don't need to write. Just make a video. And again, if you don't like to use your own face, you don't use your own face. Just use the screenshot of the post or of the graphic you created or something else. And, and they hear your voice speaking. And so, as, as, so again, you, you can make video and, video and store it. Now, you can have someone transcribe it.
which means that they hear the video and they write out the text so that now you have text that you can make into a book so you have the video you have the text and what you do is head the back down to inovo.com or to webparium.com <clears throat> um, or to five dollar dot com uh, where you or classiforium dot com all of these platforms I own them and they will be places where uh, ads will be placed on these platforms that will offer you the ability to create a, a e video book the way I'm doing for salvation checkup so you'll be able also to have uh, your book made into an e video book and incorporate all these things why would you want to do that because uh, you'll get a little more money for it than just making it into a book plus the fact that you have an e video book and you'll have the regular e book right uh, as a PDF you can then make it into a Kindle book and that can be marketed in uh, Amazon right um, and you can send that book to print through uh, creation space which is owned by Amazon they'll print on demand you have Lulu and I believe there's a few more that will take your manuscript and and you can mark it and anyone orders the book it will be printed and they receive a physical hard copy of that book that's what most of you guys using Facebook could do see you can have your own book it's just you have to purpose what you're doing and realize that you've already started and there's so many things you can do as a book that people will want to read. People will find interesting, funny. People always need something to read. They need something to read on the train, on the bus, long trip, on the airplane, you know, and you can provide them some something to laugh at, something to think about. It's all it does. All it is. Uh, so listen, I gave you a great idea. You know, some of you yes you don't you listen to Pastor but you don't hear Pastor. <laughs> <clears throat> don't be afraid of success do do these things be something do something don't just live your life like it's just time to to waste don't waste your time don't waste your life and I know there's a bunch of you your young people that have so much already that you have that you can do great things with it just simply your parents, parents. What what happened to all the drawings your kids did? They went to school. They did drawings. Some of you have hundreds of drawings. The kids brought home drawings and things they created. You know all of those things. You can put and make a book out of all of those things. A really interesting book. You know filled in with what the kids say and what they thought and and make a story you can make a story and just use these things as graphics in the book and, and just see that and the people seeing parts of this person this expression of this child and and that's good too and even just to get an idea even in one of these things that gives you an idea and some of these ideas can be multi-billion dollar businesses. They could be. I have one. I'm keeping tight lip, which I saw uh, from a woman, and her. Well, it was her idea. It was her creation. Um, she was homeless, and I would sit with her in the park where she lived. Uh, for an hour or so and if they didn't eat something again I'm, I'm saying thing I really don't need to say I was with this person and helped out how I could uh, but one of the curious things I saw that this person did to fill up her time was that she made something out of 
a natural thing that was abundant around her in the pot at that time. And I found it so interesting. And I said to him, I said, look at this. Here's a homeless woman. She doesn't have the money to do what she would want to do for herself and her family. But at the same time, she has the talent that could take them to places they would never have imagined. And I wondered on this. I said, you know, God is good. He's always good. It's that we don't see what God has given us. We don't see it. We, we put things down. We put other people down. And, and that's the danger you have. See, if, if you put other people down, that means, you know, you're putting God's creation down. Um, and, and what that ha what happens is that the small things that God placed in your life to make you prosper, you don't see. You're busy putting people down and, and you know, trying to make yourself feel good by putting other things down. And that small thing, that small thing that God placed in you or in your way, for you to become successful and prosperous, so you can eat and support your family, you won't see. You blinded to it. You see? And that you did yourself. You did that to yourself. So I saw this thing, you know, and I've always had in my heart to do something with that idea. And you know me, those who know me know I can take one thing and make 50 from it, right? <laughs> so yes, I saw that and I said, that's amazing. You know what can be done with this? It's just, it's just amazing things. So yeah, and I still have it on my back burner. Uh, I know what I need in order to get it going. So I'm waiting for that time. And, uh, and obviously when it happens, I'm going to seek out for that for that woman if God gives her life um, and me life to to make it happen um, to make sure that she gets her the credit uh, for uh, for at least um, uh, allowing me to see that uh, creation uh, and even though it would be something I would create now to commercialize it, um, as a, as a, because I know that they wouldn't be able to, um, I, I do plan to make sure that uh, in any way possible that's left to me at that time uh, to make sure that uh, that person is benefited uh, from that. So, and that's what I want to do. I want to do that particularly for 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 that. For the human effort, you know, I, I look at human struggle and potential and I honor it. I do not allow it to, to wither away and die. You know, it just, it's unfathomable for me to allow a person to wither away and have nothing uh, left of their, their, their self. Um, and their, the quality and the value that God placed in them, nothing is remembered. Nothing is, is surviving that. And I really can't live like that. I can't. And I do that for other people. And people who know me and know circumstances know that. Know that that's the way I am. And, you know, and I was thinking, listen, I hope that someone does that for me one day as well. You know, it's just a hope. I uh, hope in, in uh, the uh, darkness of humanity. Um, but uh, as someone says, oh, you can't be pessimistic. Hey, <clears throat> it's not an issue of the way I look at things. It's the issue of what happens. So let's see. Amen. Make it real. <laughs> so that is um, something, and I want to encourage you, that each and every one of you, that God has placed something in you. He's giving you something. 
and while you're pass and the thing is that mostly when you're just passing the time and you're not and you're looking to to pass the time um, and as time passes for you you may not be realizing that something that you're doing is exactly what you need to focus on that is where your success is that is something particular that you created that you that you fashion uh, it's, a, it's a particular way that you look at things and you think about them and your perspective everybody knows different ways of, of contributing to society different ways of earning income right of having a job or not. and all of these like you can tell there's certain, certain people spend their time doing that but they don't yeah I, I keep remembering some young guys I call them young guys I you know I was young too uh, when I observed them but they were younger than me and some of them were older than me just that generation you know that different age groups there but pretty much people young people we were and I was fascinated how much they love sports oh my goodness how much you guys I, I don't get into sports you know I see the World Series if the Yankees are playing if I got time that's me and that's it you know to sit I watch a boxing match here and there I'll, um, right now we're working on my CBH TV so I practically see more TV now than ever before in my life uh, because I'm working on that project. So, but I'm not a TV watcher, you know. I just I watch a little thing here and there, family, my wife and I. But to the, coming home because I want to see TV, that's not what I do. I come home to work. Hey, uh, <laughs> so. But I notice I I I'll. I, but through this, uh, now I lost track of what I was saying about that, about uh, my CBH TV, let's see. Um, there are things that we do without knowing it that are the source of what our, what our success will be on. And we spend our time doing things. Uh, the sports, right? So the sports was, um, they know sports like the back of their hand. These guys could tell you statistics, I, and they're funny how they would debate with each other. No, this player had this amount of uh, home runs in this year, and last year, oh, because he was out a few games, he suffered, but he is a better player than that guy there. He only has such and such and blah. And so these guys, I would look at them. I said, "Man, <laughs> they know more about sports and and um, players uh, than you know." I knew science, and that was my thing, you know, science and all that. I could talk Bible, you know, but these guys would talk sports like I talk about Bible. I mean, they knew their stuff, you know. But the thing, and they were dirt poor. This is the thing that always upset me. With this, the dirt poor, yet they had so much, I, they had more knowledge, as I could tell, than the guys I would see commenting on the com commentary, on the sport commentary shows, you know, like ESPN and all that. Yeah, you know, the guys there watching knew, knew more. No, what are you talking about? This and that, blah, blah, blah. You know, hey, they would come out with this stuff. So, what are you doing here? You need to be over there making that money because that guy, that guy's making the money, and he's not bringing out the point that you are. So that was one thing that I I saw, and you know, and this is my point that a lot of you guys are wasting your time and wasting your life, and you have such great talent and knowledge and, and whatnot. So I want to encourage all of you. To do something this summer, create something, create something. Start small. Do a small video book. Do a small set of videos explaining something. Do something. You got little kids, little kids. They hit the little I'm going to show you how to make a software program. 
and they go through, hey, do this, and you go here, and you put this call, look, this call here. You little kids, little kids creating programs, software. You see it on YouTube, if you bother to look, you little children. And you got children doing all sorts of things on YouTube, all different types of interests, right? What's wrong with you? <laughs> and you I, I've told you how many things you can create. By doing one thing, you can create many different things. See? So, again, do something. At my CDH TV, the thing that we're working on now, um, we're inviting people to create shows. We're going to teach them how to make a show, how to develop the show, how to uh, foster an audience, and put it all together. And we're helping them to do it. We're looking to, and, and, and that's how you start. You know, when people, when the other TV um, networks, they look at your work, what you've done, and they see what you did, let's say for my CBA TV. That's going to be a big plus. That's like preparing your resume. Is there something you've did, you've done? And and so again, the issue is, is doing, getting out there and doing it. So I want to encourage you to do things because the the media is hungry. Don't think there's too much media. No, there's a lot of junk, but there's a great hunger for interesting things uh, and for very specific information and and in particular if you have something of your own that no one's seen that before so people want to see new things so so you're a new thing you're a new person and you have a way of looking at things you have a way of doing things so people want to see that and you never know you never know if those things will catapult you into something very interesting. Uh, absolutely. The learning itself, there's so many opportunities for you to succeed. Simply, even in learning what you need to do to do these things can, can get you in a better position in your job, can get you better jobs. You know, just the process alone. The learning process alone can really benefit you in a great way. So I really encourage you really to do start doing something and start making uh, your stamp of putting your mark on society, which is what God wants us to do. That's why he said, go ye and make disciples. Disciples to do what? The same thing we're doing. Go ye and make disciples. And it's in the process that we grow as individuals and we make major contributions to the human race. This is the Reverend Dr. Gilberto Rosado thanking you once again and your patience. If you went through all that video until now, you have great patience. Uh, until next time, um, I don't know when I'll be live again until September, but we'll see what happens. God bless you. Take care. Uh, and until next time.